everybody. So a couple of years ago, you might remember I made a video showing you different ways of tipping your corset laces, including the use of metal aglets. Not exactly these exact ones here, but uh, just some different ones. However, at the time, I didn't really know a lot of sources of where to buy your aglets. So if you buy these through a specialty uh, corset supply store, you will likely pay between one and two dollars for a pair of aglets, which is, you know, still pretty, it's a couple of dollars, so it's still pretty cheap. Now, if you live nearby a bead store and you ask them for, say, cone tips or filigree cones, um, cone beads, they might do really well as aglets and they might not even know that they're selling aglets actually. So you might be able to get them for say 30 to 50 cents for a pair of aglets. Unfortunately, I don't live near any bead store and if I wanted to order them online, it would be really cheap for me to do so. I might get uh, 30 aglets for about five dollars but then i'd have to pay another uh seven to ten dollars for shipping which you know it really doesn't make sense to do that but then i found these here in a wholesale store that uh, sold these for about a dollar sixty for ten of them and it has free shipping on top of that now when you look at it it actually um, is a little bit too big to be an aglet. It's a little bit too wide on this end, but I'm gonna see if I can do a little bit of a DIY project and make them into uh, suitable aglets, either by uh, contracting them or even cutting them in half. See, if I cut them in half and they work really well as aglets, then I would be making my own really pretty filigree aglets to the tune of about, um, I would say 16 cents for a pair. And the other really nice thing about this is that it comes in three different colors, gold, the antique brass, and the silver here. So you're not limited to only one color in some situations. So for this little project, my supplies are uh, some spare lace, obviously, <laughs> um, some super glue because uh, some aglets do respond well to just gluing in the lace. I am also going to try just sewing the aglet onto the tip of the um, the lace is there. So if you use super glue, you're probably not gonna need to use any fray stop or anything, but if you're gonna be just sewing it on and not gluing it, then it's good to have a, a fray stop or fray check. And then obviously uh, some scissors for the laces here and uh, some metal snips for these. Now, I'm not sure how thin these are and if they can be cut with just regular scissors. If you will be cutting them with scissors and just make sure that your scissors are sort of dispensable, you really don't care what you cut them with because uh, cutting metal can really dull the blades. And for rolling these smaller, I have an assortment of uh, pliers here just to manipulate it, but it is soft enough to actually manipulate with your hands if you really want to. So I'm just showing you a close up or a detail shot of this. So it's a really pretty uh, design and you can see that it already has a, a seam on here and the seam is not sharp and you can just use that to sort of open it up and you can either use your pliers to um, just roll it a little bit smaller so that it can fit over the lace or you can just actually slice that down the middle and make it into two smaller aglets. Here you can see me opening up the cone with my hands and cutting right down the center. It's soft enough to be cut with a pair of scissors and I actually ended up getting a cleaner cut using scissors compared to using my tin snips, so I just went with the scissors. Then I take my needle nose pliers and I hold one end with the pliers while I gently wrap the other end of the filigree around just using my hands. If you have round nose jewelry pliers, then this might actually work better because then you don't have the flat side of needle nose pliers making kinks or dents in your work. I work the filigree gently, rounding it just a little bit at a time, and I also give it a bit of an overlap. The side that I cut is sharp, while the pre-cut seam is not sharp. So when I overlap it, I make sure that the sharp edge is on the inside. And if you want, you can take some time to pinch the end into a nice point, although it's not completely necessary. Actually, if you're going to be sewing this on, then it might be easier if you just leave a small hole at the point. I also saw that there is a tiny sharp point from the cut scallop on the uh, wider end, so I folded that back on itself so it wouldn't catch on anything. Okay, so I ended up doing uh, three pairs of these, so one in each color. This was the first pair I did, so it's probably the, the least polished of them all, and they got um, 
a better and uh, more even in shape and size as I practiced a little bit more. And I would say it took uh, maybe uh, between two and three minutes to roll these. So a little bit time consuming if you are doing a lot of these, but I mean, if you were just watching a movie or something, then it's not that bad. And I think it actually looks pretty cute. I think I'd be able to get away with putting these onto the ends of laces. Now I'm going to secure the aglet to the lace. So this one I'm going to sew. Since this lace already has plastic aglets, I'm going to cut those off. In case anyone is starting with a cord that you just cut from a spool, this is how it's going to look for you. Then I apply fray check to the cut area, and before it completely dries, I take my needle and thread and I wrap it semi-tightly around the tip. I probably wrapped mine a little bit too low because, as you'll see later on, after the aglet was secured on, some of the thread was still visible below. I also used a purple thread here so you could clearly see it against the white, but I recommend that you use a matching thread when you do this. You can use your needle to go straight through the top of this aglet, or if the tip is fused, then you can go through the side like this. Use small stitches going through the filigree of the aglet and through the cord a couple of times. The fray check makes it tacky, but it dries fine when it's done. Now using the glue method, I'm once again cutting off the plastic aglet like we did before, and now I'm applying a drop of the super glue to the end of the lace. In retrospect, I would have preferred to use E6000 or a hot glue gun if I had either one, because the super glue was extremely volatile and unpleasant to work with. Here I'm trying to work quickly and roll on the aglet before the glue dries, while also trying not to breathe in the fumes. Okay, so two different methods of putting on your little uh, filigree homemade aglets here. So that is the sewn on version and that is the glued on version. I very much prefer the sewn on version, even though here you can actually see the thread. If you just use a thread that matches your corset laces, then it would be less conspicuous and, uh, you know, just don't wrap it so far down as I did. Uh, so the reason that I prefer this one to this one is that uh, with a sewn on one, if it falls off, I can just sew sew it back on. Uh, with this one, the glue, I found it very volatile and there's no guarantee that it's going to stay on forever. Also, I had to undo all of my wrapping work and put it back on just so the, the end of the lace would fit in there. So I found that very laborious and unnecessarily time consuming. So I would prefer to use the sewn on method. So I do consider this project to be a semi-success. They are a whole lot cheaper than filigree aglets that I can find anywhere else. Um, and it has free shipping, which is another huge bonus. They are a little bit more time consuming uh, compared to just right ready to go aglets since you do have to cut them and uh, roll them a little bit smaller but I don't mind doing that for the amount that I'm saving because this is essentially one tenth of the price of uh, the other aglets that are ready made. So I hope this was informative to you. Let me know if you would consider doing something like this. I'll put the link to where I found these little crafty things down below and let me know if you have any questions. I'll get back to you and I'll see you after the weekend for another video. Bye!